Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about something that I think is really important in street photography and that is the idea of using a wide angle lens and getting close to your subject. And that can be frightening to some people because um, often on the streets you are taking photos of strangers and it's not easy to approach strangers like at that distance. So you're probably already familiar with the famous quote by Robert Kappa if your photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he wasn't like what I would call a street photographer, but this uh, quote applies to street photography to 100%. And I think this quote doesn't mean that you have to fill the frame with your subject, because you can use just a telephoto lens to uh, fill the frame. I think he, what he meant was um, the proximity of the photographer to the subject. Because if you use a wide angle lens and get really close, uh, the viewer gets the notion of being there, being in the moment. Uh, the look is totally different compared to a photo taken uh, with a telephoto lens. And I think that was uh, what he was talking about. The question now is how wide your lens should be, if you should like use a 35 millimeter or maybe a, a 10 millimeter or something in between. And for me personally, I started out with a 35 millimeter lens and when this came out the Leica Q. I got more used to sh shoot like a 28 millimeter lens, which is uh, quite a bit more wide than a 35, even if it's just seven millimeters, but it makes a big difference. I also tried to shoot with a 21 millimeter lens, uh, but for me personally, that was a little too wide. People often ask me what kind of gear should they use, and usually I wouldn't say that gear is super important for street photography but if you want to get close it can make a big difference for instance if you use like a big DSLR camera with a big lens and you get like uh, really close like this distance and people will be scared and it will intimidate uh, your subject so it's better to use something small like the like a Q or the Ricoh GR or Fuji X70 something really small another benefit of those cameras is they have a leaf shutter and so it means they are really silent and if you're really close that can make a difference too for getting close with wide angle uh, and taking like candid shots it's much better to have like a quiet and small camera. You could also use a small mirrorless camera as long as the camera is um, quiet or it has like maybe an electronic shutter so it's uh, that silent. The question I get really often is um, if people get mad at me if I get really close and take their portrait or their photo. And um, I have to say, uh, so far I haven't encountered uh, any issues whatsoever. Sometimes they don't even notice me taking the photo because they are really busy and they are stuck in their head and they think about something else. Of course, if you're in an environment where there's nobody around and you go to a stranger and hold the camera right in the face and press the shutter, you might be in trouble, <laughs> depending on the person you're taking the photo of. But, um, now let me give you some example photos and uh, I try to explain how I got the shot and what happened after the shot. So for instance in this image um, the guy with the cigarette in his mouth he was like basically he was behind the wall on the left and I knew at some point that he would uh, take a look around the corner to see what's going on so I pointed the camera got everything ready and just waited for him to look around the, the corner and then I took the shot. His reaction was he was really surprised that uh, he was looking into a camera because I think he didn't expect that at all. Another good option to try out to take photos of strangers like really close is uh, on the subway. In this case I was on the subway, my camera was around my neck and out of the sudden this lady started to fix her makeup. And I thought oh this might be a good opportunity to take some photos and I was really close to her like it was like less than one meter. I think I took like 20 to 30 shots of this situation because she was like changing it up a lot and she was moving so I wasn't sure if I um, got everything right so I took like 20 to 30 shots and even though I was so close she didn't notice me taking a photo at all. I saw this lady she was walking towards me and I thought hey this is a really cool scene and I liked how she was holding her hand and blocking the sun. I was shooting in burst mode just to get the, uh, the timing right because she was going really fast. It was really easy to get really close and I, th I don't think that she noticed me. So this, <laughs> this image here uh, I really like because um, it wasn't planned that way. Because I was standing there waiting for people to pass and walk across the crosswalk. 
and out of the sudden this guy showed up and he walked past me and I raised the camera and in that moment he just looked into the lens and I took a couple shots and then he was gone. I think he noticed me taking his photo but he didn't care. This shot here I took with a Leica monochrome and a 35mm lens so it's a little bit less wide and in this scene um, I really like because all the guys are smoking and I uh, thought it might be a good shot so I approached them and I think I was standing there for like 10 seconds pointing the camera and the guy in the front he, he saw me but as you can see he doesn't care about me taking his photo. Now if you're now curious and uh, you want to try for yourself, I have a, maybe a couple of tips for you um, to make it a little bit more easy. And tip number one, and that's really important, get your camera settings right. Like know your settings, because um, in such a situation sometimes it's uh, happen the action is happening so fast and if you have to dial in your settings, uh, the moment is gone. My second tip would be like to act uh, as you are a tourist. Maybe you are a tourist actually, and just walk around, wander around, take a look around, take a photo of everything and then get to the person you want to take the photo of and snap the photo. As a tourist usually you get away with a lot more. Another thing to keep in mind is that people are often uh, are not aware of that you took their photo because especially if you go get really close, sometimes they, they think that you take a photo of something uh, behind them because they turn around and have a look. And that happened to me a lot. So like I mentioned before, the place you're shooting in can make a big difference. So as especially if you're starting out with uh, like getting close to people, you should uh, pick places where uh, many people, like big cities, subways, stuff like that. And the reason is obvious because when there's lots of people around, um, you don't stand out that much. And most people, when they're really busy, they don't think about some random stranger walking around and taking candid shots of, of strangers. Usually it's a, it's a good area to go to. Another tip would be to go to more touristy areas. People usually are more open-minded to having their photo taken. So go to those places and uh, try out to get close to people. Another good spot to try this out would be like busy crosswalks because uh, as you could see in the pictures before, Usually there are so many people and you just stand there and wait. Wait and let people approach you and let people invade your personal space and then take their photo. In conclusion, the main benefits for me are the photos are more engaging and um, more immersive than taking photo with a, like a normal lens or a telephoto lens. Another benefit is that you have to step out of, out of your comfort zone and you have to like approach strangers on the streets and get really close and personal. This will help you grow as a person and as a street photographer as well. Also by getting close to people you're taking a higher risk and with a higher risk usually comes with a higher reward if you succeed. So you should consider this because I think um, it's totally worth to get close to people and uh, you will mess up of course but I think you might end up with some, some really cool shots and uh, give it a go. So guys, that's it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and head over to my blog if you want to see more images or you want to see the EXIF data to the photos I just showed you or get more information. I will leave the link to my blog post in the description box below. And yeah, leave a comment if you have any questions or maybe you just want to share your story and your experience of getting close to people. So in the next video I will show you how I get my black and white images and how I process them because many people ask me uh, to make a video about it and you will see this in the next episode. Until then, auf Wiedersehen!